Hello Health 230 students, this is Brian Clark. Today I will be lecturing on chapter number 9, Weight Management. This is lecture 1 of 2. In this first lecture I'm going to be talking rather generally about how weight is gained and how weight is lost. And in my opinion, this first lecture is much more important to your ability to communicate effectively with patients. Um, yes, in the second lecture I'm going to be going over some very specific information about hormones, things like ghrelin and leptin and their effect on the body. And um, Yes, that information is important, but what's much more important, in my opinion, is to be able to give patients useful information. Uh, so oftentimes when you talk about specifics you're just talking over their head but when you talk in, in broad general terms people can understand that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna, going to try to convey information to you in a manner that I feel is, is appropriate to communicate to the general population and I hope that you'll put some of this in your back pocket and use it in the future. First and foremost, people need to understand that being normal is not necessarily being healthy. Uh, so oftentimes people think if they are eating in the manner that they that they see other people or eating in what they consider to be a, a normal fashion that that is okay, when in reality it is not. Uh, feel free to navigate out to CNN Fit Nation and there you will find this map. It's um, I think if you if you search for growing waste lines, uh, you should be able to find this rather easily. But if we go back to 1985, we see that all of the, these states, pardon me, all of these states that are shown in gray had less than 10 percent of their population being obese. The states that are shown in kind of this baby blue. 10 to 14 percent of their population was considered obese. Now admittedly we didn't have data on everyone but uh, very quickly we do have data on almost everyone or almost all states and you'll see that once we do have much better data we can see that um, still uh, just a few years later um, that um, you know, most states are falling in this somewhere between 10 to 14 percent range um, and, and less than 10 percent range. But only very few states, um, it was at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, only 8 states back in 1991 had less than 10 percent of their population in the obese category. Uh, the majority of them were in this 10 to 14 percent range. We go to 1995 and you'll see a very big change between 1991 and 1995. Very quickly you see basically the eastern half of the United States falling into this 15 to 19 percent category and with the remainder of the states being in the 10 to 14 percent category. We go to 1997. We see that pattern continuing. Go to 2001 and we see a fairly major change there. Basically the eastern half of the US has one in four or between 20 and 24 percent of their population as being obese and only Colorado, <laughs> only Colorado still had between 10 and 14 percent of its population in the obese category. Then we go to 2004. We see the situation worsening and finally to 2006 and, and this is the most recent data that we have we see that once again basically the eastern half of the US is, uh, is not doing very well in, in this scenario or in this case in 2006. Uh, all of those states that you see in the rust color they had basically one in four, 25 to 30 percent of their population in the obese category and Mississippi, Alabama, and West Virginia had greater than 30 percent of their population in the obese category. Now I think that you can you can see very quickly that there is a very distinct trend over a rather short period of time and uh, it, it's pretty safe to say what that trend is. We as a society we are very quickly becoming significantly overweight. 
here you'll see the same information but um, this is the information that comes directly from your text ultimately the the causes of obesity still come down to caloric imbalance yes we do have these genetic predispositions but evolutionarily speaking you know, it makes good sense why uh, some people are, are low in leptin for example and um, that, that uh, that's a, a uh, appetite suppressing hormone um, and why some people have excess amounts of ghrelin uh, during the majority of the existence of human beings there has been uh, a there, there's been kind of a feast or famine type of um, of, condi of conditions on a regular basis and those people that had the ability to store large amounts of fat well there was a there was a competitive advantage for those people and um, now that we live in a society where there really is not a need to have excess amounts of body fat because we don't have those those famine times now like our predecessors did uh, we we have a tendency to progressively gain weight but ultimately regardless of these genetic predispositions or you know, leptin deficiency or you know, too much ghrelin circulating in our blood um, ultimately body weight is determined by caloric balance the amount of energy that's coming in versus the amount of energy that's going out if we are eating more calories aka energy than we are burning off then we're gonna gain weight now let's let's look at a rather simplistic example uh, here you see someone putting gasoline into an automobile we understand very clearly that as we put gasoline into an automobile that that is fuel or energy being placed into the gas tank and there's only a finite or specific amount of energy that we can put in once the tank is full that's it our bodies not the same way <laughs> our bodies uh, they have an unlimited fuel tank or at least somewhat unlimited fuel tank and our body can just continue storing more and more energy by allowing fat cells to grow larger and larger not only do we have our energy stores in our body but we also have engines um, some engines are bigger than others uh, or some people's engines are bigger than others here you see a photo of an absolutely enormous engine this is an engine that goes into a cargo ship uh, this company in Japan they make sh they make engines specifically for cargo ships and as you can see those engines are absolutely massive in size and as you can well imagine that massive engine uses massive amounts of fuel now the amount that it, it can use at any given time can vary depending upon the intensity of the work that it's doing another way of thinking about that is you can say the amount of energy or amount of fuel that it uses depends on how much throttle is being given at a given time at a, at, at a given time now here you see a much smaller engine uh, this is an automobile engine and comparatively this engine is much in, much smaller than this engine it still uses fuel regardless of whether it's idling or whether a person has the accelerator to the floor but it uses much less the reason I like to bring that to a person's attention is because we do have some variations in the amount of fuel that we burn some people can burn more than others because some people carry more muscle mass than do our other people our engine is our muscle mass now yes admittedly we do have some other things in our body that utilize energy things like the, the, the brain um, you know, e even the intestines the smooth mus smooth muscle tissue in the intestines utilizes energy but primarily the amount of energy that we use in a given day is determined by the amount of muscle mass that we use I'm sorry the amount of muscle mass that we have and how much we use that muscle mass so if it truly is as simple as knowing how much energy first and foremost goes into the body just like gasoline going into a fuel tank and knowing how much 
energy is expended or how much gasoline is is used then you you and I should be able to calculate that and make a very uh, very quick determination as to whether or not a person is in a caloric surplus meaning they're bringing more calories in or more energy into their body than they're burning off or whether they're in a caloric deficit where they are burning off more calories than they're bringing in and I talked about this in the last lecture that it is my very distinct recommendation that people who are attempting to lose weight that they utilize a heart rate monitor with a caloric estimation function because th these these devices they do a very good job of estimating caloric expenditure and if we know the amount of energy that we are utilizing and then we can utilize the uh, use it a, a dietary analysis software such as diet analysis plus or any of the any one of the multitude of softwares out there that estimates caloric intake and we just compare those two numbers we look at energy in versus energy out then very quickly we start gaining some perspective or a patient starts gaining some perspective as to whether or not on a given day they are in a caloric surplus or whether they're in a caloric debt and for a per person to lose weight they have to be in a caloric deficit um, and I, I just a moment ago I accidentally said debt um, I meant to say deficit whether or not a person is in a caloric deficit so uh, by gaining that perspective over time you know, a person doesn't necessarily have to wear a heart rate monitor to know approximately where that caloric balance is uh, I personally I don't need a heart rate monitor to know whether or not I am overeating in a given day because I have utilized a heart rate monitor so much during my lifetime and I've done a di done so many dietary analyses that I would say that probably 90 95 percent of the time I could tell you whether or not I am bringing in more calories that I'm using or whether I am t bringing in fewer calories than I'm using in a given day and once a person comes to that epiphany and realizes how much energy is in the food that they eat and how much energy is being expended through physical activity very quickly there very quickly a person becomes empowered to manage his or her body weight so it's my hope that you can use these types of analogies with patients and convey information to them in general terms that they can understand and ultimately can apply to their own lives. All right, thank you for your attention today.